Hey, what's up? In this video, I'm going to work through 22 examples of solving one-step equations. So if you're just learning how to solve equations, or you just need a little bit of refresher, this video is gonna be for you. Now, when we're looking at these examples, basically the question that we're gonna ask ourselves is what is happening to the variable? Basically, what operation is being applied to the variable and how am I going to undo that operation? And we're gonna undo that operation using what we call the properties of equality. So if you look at this first example, our goal here is to isolate the x, basically meaning get the x by itself. But we can't get the x by itself right now because it's being added by nine. So therefore, what we're gonna to need to do is undo a addition by nine by subtracting a nine. And again, we just need to make sure whatever we subtract on the left, we're gonna to have to subtract on the right-hand side. So therefore, nine minus nine is zero. You know, you could write x plus zero, but let's just write it as x, because um, x plus zero is x. And then 20 minus nine is going to be 11. In the next example, you can see my variable is p. That's what we're gonna to wanna to isolate, get it by itself. And here you can see that p is being added by 13. So to undo addition of 13, you're gonna subtract a 13. So four minus 13 is going to be a negative nine equals P. And again, if you wanna rearrange these, that's perfectly fine, P equals negative nine. Now the next example kind of sometimes gets confusing because people think that you're adding M. Well, yeah, you are adding M to 28, but again, our goal here is to find the value of M that makes this equation true. So just like I rearranged these two equations right here, I can rearrange this as well. I can rewrite this as M plus 28 equals 40. What that allows me to do is now see that my variable m, which I'm trying to isolate, get by itself, is being added by 28. So I wanna undo the addition by 28 by subtracting a 28 on both sides. Therefore, m is going to equal 12. Now for question number four, um, again, you can see this a and it's like, oh, this kinda looks a little confusing. Like what is going on here? Well, one thing we can do is we can just say, you know, again, a is being added by one third. So therefore we could subtract a one third. Now there's a couple different ways we can get around this because typically students do not want to go ahead and subtract a one third on, one, on both sides. And you can do that because then a would equal two sevenths minus one third. But most students kind of get confusing with subtracting fractions. So therefore what we can do is identify the, what we call the least common denominator. And the least common denominator is going to be the smallest number that three and seven divide into, which in this case is going to be 21. So what I'm gonna do with that least common denominator is I'm gonna multiply this whole equation by 21. So when I do that, I have 21 times a two sevenths equals a one third plus a. All right, now why am I going to do this? Well, what's happened is when 21, like seven divides into 21 and three divides into 21, right? So seven divides into 21 three times. So this is really three times two equals three divides into 21 seven times times one equals A. So when you go ahead and simplify this, what you really get here is a six equals seven Oops, that's supposed to be a plus. Seven plus A. And now I see that, again, my A, my seven is being added to my A, right, if you just rearrange them. So you can go ahead and subtract a seven on both sides and you get A negative one is equal to A, or you can rewrite that as A equals negative one. Now in this next example, you can see we have some mixed numbers and it's like, why do I need to do mixed numbers here? Um, but that's okay. Let's just go ahead and again, understand it doesn't matter if it's a fraction, a mixed number, a decimal. Let's go ahead and see just what is happening here. Again, I have my variable Z, which I'm trying to isolate, and I am subtracting a four and two thirds. Well, again, just using our inverse operations, we want to undo subtracting four and two thirds. So what I'm going to do, oops, is I'm just going to add a four and two thirds to both sides. Now, the nice thing here is remember when you're adding mixed numbers, you can you just add the holes. So four plus two is going to be six, and then you add the fractions. And again, remember when you're adding fractions, as long as they have the same denominator, then you just add the numerators or subtract the numerators, whatever the operation is. So in this case, I have two thirds plus two thirds is gonna equal a four thirds. Then you recognize that four thirds is really equivalent to, this is actually equivalent to six plus one and one third, right? Because you could write, rewrite the four thirds as three thirds. So again, just to kind of get a little bit simpler here, let's just keep on simplifying this. You could also write your answer as seven and one thirds. I don't really like mixed numbers though, but again, that's just a good review for you. 
In this next example, you see that now my variable j is not being added by four, it's being subtracted by four. But again, understanding our inverse operations, we wanna undo subtracting by four. So to undo subtracting by four, we're gonna add a four. And again, just applying those properties of equality, we're gonna add that four to both sides. So j is gonna equal negative seven plus four is going to be a negative three. In the next example, again, students get confused with this because the negative five and b are swapped. It doesn't look like what operation is being applied to the b. So again, we can rewrite this a couple different ways. I can rewrite this as b plus negative five equals 22, or simply you could just rewrite this as b minus five equals 22, right? Adding a negative is the same thing as subtracting. But I think preferably writing it in this format is gonna be a little bit easier to understand what operations you need to apply to isolate your variable b. And that is going to be addition of five on both sides. So therefore b is gonna equal a 27. In the next example, um, we see that b is being subtracted by 18. So I'm gonna add an 18 to both sides. Okay, and that's gonna give us a 41 equals B, and then you could rearrange if you like to, if you need to. Um, the next one, again, is just having decimals, and that's okay, like just kind of like with the mixed number, the operation remains the same, it's just we're using a different uh, subset of numbers, or type of numbers, not integers. So in this case, um, I am just going to, I see that my value C is being basically subtracted by negative 5.1, right? Like you could see how this is really just the same thing as writing it as B minus five. So that's really what's happening here. It's really Z minus 5.1, if you were to rearrange it like this. But to save ourselves some time, um, I'm not gonna rearrange it. I'm just gonna understand I need to add a 5.1 to both sides, okay? And therefore, we're gonna add the decimal. So 0.2 plus 0.1 is 0.3, and then nine plus five is going to be a 14.1. Now we're gonna look into multiplication. So when we're looking into the multiplication, you see that now I need to undo multiplication. So when we had addition, to undo addition, what did we do? We subtracted. When we had subtraction, to undo subtraction, we added. So you can see how we're applying these inverse operations. So when we see here, what's being, what value is being applied to my b? Well, it's being multiplied by five. So how do we undo the multiplication of five? We're going to divide by five. So we're gonna divide by five on both sides. B equals here a 20. All right, so onto our next example here, um, you can see that now we're having multiplied by a fraction. Now there's a couple different ways that we could think about this. We can think about this in like the last problem. If I have 10 uh, or 5b and I'm multiplying b times five, I'm gonna divide by five on both sides, right? Well, in this case, um, I could also think about that I have two thirds times z. So you could think about this as dividing by two thirds. Now in this problem, it's not so bad because anything divided by itself is always gonna be one, right? Z is equal to one. But sometimes, kind of like in the previous example, students do not like fractions. So it's helpful to think about, is there another way we can think about the multiplication of a fraction? And yes, there is. You can think about the multiplication of a fraction is just multiplying by the reciprocal. So when you're dividing by two thirds, the same thing as dividing by two thirds is to multiply by the reciprocal. Because again, when you divide a fraction by itself, what do you get? One. When you multiply a fraction by its reciprocal, what are you gonna get? You're going to get one. So you can see dividing by a fraction by itself or dividing by fraction or multiplying by a reciprocal is going to be the same operation. So therefore, if I would have also, instead of dividing, I just multiplied by the reciprocal, you can see that would still give me z is equal to one. So it's just another way to think about that. A lot of times when we do these problems, students um, kind of get the confusion with the fractions. So that's where we're gonna look at that. All right, um, in the next example here, again, you can just see I have my variable y is being multiplied by negative seven. So I'm just gonna divide by negative seven here on both sides. And you can see y is equal to negative four. Um, in the next example, you see my r is being divided by seven. Now, again, here's where it kind of gets a little confusing here. Like if you divide by seven, a lot of people are like, I don't know how to take a fraction and divide it by a whole number, right? So again, dividing is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So what is the reciprocal of seven? Well, again, that's just gonna be one over seven. So if I redo this problem here, and I say negative seven halves, is equal to seven r. So instead of dividing by seven, which is still fine, right? I could also think about this as just multiplying by the reciprocal. And the reason why this is a little bit easier sometimes to work with, because multiplying fractions is fairly simple. When you're multiplying fractions, you're just multiplying numerator times numerator and denominator times the denominator. So therefore, this gives me a negative seven 
4 tenths equals r. Well, negative 7 tenths, or negative 7 over 4 tenths is a negative 1 half, right? And again, it might have been something simple for you, but again, if you get stuck on this, just kind of remember that. Uh, for number three is we have 11 equals t times 2.5. Now, if you divide by 2.5, um, you're probably not going to get too far, right? Unless you have a calculator because most students kind of get stuck with fractions. And again, it really depends on the class and you know what you're looking for if that is an acceptable answer. If that is not an acceptable, acceptable answer, um, you could always rewrite the decimal as a fraction, which sometimes it just comes with a little bit of practice or you can just get rid of the decimal. So kind of like how we got rid of the fraction by multiplying by the LCD, if we wanna get rid of the decimal, we can just multiply by a factor of 10 based on our decimal place. So if I multiply everything by 10 here, so let's kind of rewrite this problem over here. If I say 11 equals, let's say T times 2.5, right? If I wanna get rid of this decimal point, what I'll do is I'll just multiply everything times 10. So therefore, therefore I'll have 110 equals t times 25, right? Because 10 times 110 is going to be, or 10, 11 times 110 is 110, and then 10 times 2.5 is just going to be 25. Now, when I go ahead and divide here, oops, divide by 25 here, now I have the fraction 110, sorry, that's over myself, over 25 is equal to t. And now I can just simply reduce that fraction. Okay, um, and then reducing that fraction, let's go and see, that's going to be um, five goes into there 25 times, 26, 27. Um, an idiot. 27 and five goes in there 27 fifths. There you go. Okay, um, now let's go and do the next one. Again, get rid of this decimal, I don't like this, so I am going to um, divide by 10. Divided by 10 here, I get 50B is equal to 95. Divide by 50, divide by 50. T is going to equal, and again, now we could simplify and say, all right, um, how many times does 5 go into 50? Well, that's going to be 10 times, right? How many times does 5 go into 95? Well, 5 goes into 120 times, so 95 is just going to be a 19. Same example here. I don't want to deal with the decimal. You could always, if you had a calculator or if you didn't need to, you didn't really wouldn't need to do all this. But again, I don't have a calculator, so I'm just going to show you how to simplify this in fractional form. Because again, you could always just use a decimal here, right? Um, so this would be a negative 24 is equal to a 30D. Divide by 30. And I say, all right, what number divides into 24 as well as in a 30? Um, nothing, or actually six, right? Six goes into negative 24, that's gonna be a negative four times, and so that'd be a negative four fifths. So D, oops. So let's see, that's gonna be a negative four fifths is equal to D. So you just reduce the fraction. A little bit easier sometimes, which would, again, if you, you could just use a calculator as well. All right, so now let's get into the division portion. So now you can see that my variable is being divided by seven, right? So if I wanna undo division, I'm just gonna multiply by a seven on both sides. And therefore, I would get x equals seven times 12. Well, seven times 10 is 70, seven times two is 14, so that's gonna give you an 84. Another way to think about this is if you don't like the division here, you could also think about this as 14 is equal to one half y, right? So again, you could also think about this, you're undoing division, which is multiplying by two, right? Well, if you wanted to undo, if you wanted to rewrite this as a multiplication problem, then the multiplication problem um, is one half. So you could divide by one half or same thing, multiply by the reciprocal. So you can see how that kind of comes back to us again. So that's 28 is equal to y. Um, I think, oh, here we go. We have our four, our k divided by four. So again, we just see that my k is being divided by four. So I'm just gonna multiply by a four on both sides. Here, I can simplify this fraction here. Two divides into four, two times. Negative seven times two is going to be a negative 14. Here, you can see my variable k is being multiplied by four. So I'm gonna divide by four, right? But again, we come into this issue like, crap, what do I do when I'm dividing by four? I might not want to do it this way. So again, you could think about it that way. That's perfectly fine. Or what a lot of students like to do is just say, all right, why don't I just multiply by the reciprocal? Let's multiply by one fourth. Now, what you have is going to be K is going to equal, and let's see, this is going to be a negative seven eighths. Okay. 
Um, the next one here, we have Q. And again, we are having Q is being multiplied by two thirds. So you could either divide by two thirds or you could multiply by the reciprocal. So I could say a three halves, oops, what am I doing? Three halves times two thirds Q equals 18. So multiply the reciprocal times everything and that's gonna give you Q is equal to a 18 times three halves. And again, a couple different ways you could do this. You could just divide the two into the 18, which is gonna give you nine, and then multiply the nine times three. Nine times three is going to be 27. Okay, and then one more example, guys. It doesn't matter if your variable is on the left side or if your variable is on the right side. Again, you're gonna do the same thing. Um, I just like multiplying by the reciprocal. I think that's easy, so let's just go and do that. So let's multiply by seven thirds here. On both sides, three goes into negative six, um, negative two times, and seven times negative two is going to be a negative 14. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is 22 different examples for solving one-step equations. Please make sure to check out my other examples on solving linear equations as well as solving one-step equations. I'll check you guys on the next video. Cheers.